Hello, welcome once again. Um, this is a quick diagram, an idle air control valve, and we have a computer here. We have the throttle body over here, and this is the plate. This is the air index system where air is being sucked in into the engine over here and into the engine itself, the cylinder with a piston over here. This is the intake valve. This is the exhaust valve where the well, the byproduct of the after combustion, all that air fuel air fuel is gonna go into this that was burned, combusted, goes into the exhaust over here. Now, air comes in on the when you this when you have a throttle body, you're stepping on the gas. What you're doing is you're opening this throttle plate. You see this plate over here, opening and closing it. As you're doing that, you're letting more air being drawn into all of this into him the cylinders now let's say you're at idle i don't have my foot on the gas pedal if i don't have my foot on the gas pedal i'm not uh, um i'm not releasing or pressing the throttle plate to let air in we have to have another way of letting air in to the engine years ago we, it was mechanical. Now comes, as you guessed it, ECM, PCM. The computer controls it. And then we'll get more into detail. It's a valve, idle air control valve, that lets air in. And when it goes in, it lets more air go in or less air go in. When the computer sees that, we know more air, more fuel. Less air, less fuel. So based on his... This is uh, the the valve, the position of the valve, position of the, of the of the stepper motor, and the actuator. All these, not to get too technical, wherever it is, it'll either let more air in or less air in by the something called a pinto. Again, I don't want to get too technical with people, but anyway, doesn't make a difference what. But just remember, idle air control valve. It's a valve that lets more air in, less air in as you idling. Remember, you're not opening up the gas pedal. This gas pedal, which is connected to this throttle body, is not being activated. So it's in this position, the closed position. Now, when you step on the gas, then this is being activated. The air is being sucked in right here through this. Now, why do I bring this up? Because on a cold day, I was on a cold day. I was asked this. He knows that it's cold. Computer knows that it's cold. How? By sensors. See various sensors going into him? He has to control the RPM. On a cold day in January, in Canada, or wherever you are, 10 degrees, if you, if you have a tachometer on your gauge, the tachometer is the one that tells you the RPM, right? 500, 600 RPM. On a really cold day, you'll be close maybe to about 1,000 RPM. Question in the comment was, is there something wrong with the idle air control valve or the computer? No. If it's a cold, cold day and you haven't started that car in eight hours, whatever it is, overnight, whatever it is, it is you expect that RPM to be high. 1,000 RPM, 1,100 RPM, 900, whatever it is. Why? Because air, everything is cold. Cylinders are cold. Alternators cold. Everything is cold in that car. As more air is being drawn in by him, more fuel is being drawn. The fuel injectors, something called the pulses. Again, pulse width modulation. Not to. I don't want to get too hard into these uh, technology uh, terminologies, but the fuel injectors are on longer on a cold day. To let more fuel being drawn into the cylinders. So in January, your fuel injectors, the pulse is wider. You're, let, you're letting more fuel in. Why? Because more air is being drawn in. And that will give you a higher RPM. As the fuel injectors are being less open, based upon less air from him, he con the computer controls this. He sees... The RPM, he sees the temperature of the air. He says, you know what? The coolant temperature, the, the, the engine is getting warmer. If it's getting warmer, let me decrease the valve on, on idle. Let less air come in. Less air will come in. 
less fuel will come in. To the point that you were at 1,000 RPM, now you'll be about 600 RPM, where everything warms up. So again, if you see 1,000 RPM, it is cold outside, it is January in, in, in Wisconsin, remember, the computer is doing his job. That's why that RPM is high, because he knows everything is cold, the coolant temperature is cold, intake air temperature is cold. He knows, you know what, I got to let more air in. That means I'll let more fuel in, and it'll take longer to warm up the engine. So if you see that, ECM is working perfectly normal. Like I, asked, I was asked the question, higher RPM, it depends. As if you use it, if you use it, if you start up the engine, obviously, and then you go back after one hour, it won't fall. The end, the coolant temperature will be, let's say, 190. It might still be 150. and not going to drop down that much. So once you have it warmed up, it'll stay pretty much warmed up. But after a cold night, expect that tachometer to be high. But gradually, it should come down, obviously, to 500, 600 RPM, whatever it is. So, and the computer, nope, you can't blame the computer. You know why? He's doing his job. He has a long time to warm up that engine. That's why he's telling the valve, open up more, because I got to let more fuel in. Please, if you like this and you understand a little better, hopefully, and on a warm day, let's say it's summer Florida, you see, it takes much, cool, much quicker to warm up that engine. Everything is warmer. The temperature, the temperature is warmer. Intake air temperature is warmer. The uh, a coolant temperature sensor, that the coolant heats up much quicker. Therefore, he doesn't have to open up this that much. He doesn't have to open up the fuel injectors that wide that much. It'll cool down, cool up. It'll warm up much quicker in the summertime. You ever notice that arrow on the the gauge from the temperature? It'll be like a hundred, hundred ten. It'll go up quick, very quickly, won't it? It's summer. The air is warmer. But in winter, oh boy, does it take a long time for that needle to go up on that gauge, on that temperature gauge. It takes a long time, doesn't it? Something like 15, 20 minutes, right? That's the difference. That's because, let's blame him. But he's doing it correctly. He's doing his job correctly. Please go to my channel, see my videos, how to test relays and circuit. That I just did some videos, please. Joe, Electronic Schematics for Auto. And the other one is Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph.